Hi, welcome to the Strappy Food Advisor Migration Walkthrough Guide. Now we're going to use our Food Advisor example project to walk through some of the key steps in migrating your application. We're not gonna have time to do all of the migration, but we're gonna make sure that we cover all the areas, like moving your initial code to v4 using code mods, and also talk about how to deal with customizations. We're gonna touch on middleware, policies, we're gonna talk about controllers, services and routes and GraphQL. Now, before we start, let's take a look at the basic outline of the migration process just to give us an idea. I'm also gonna share some helpful playlists here to check out some of our previous resources to help you all out. Taking a look at the form here, we start with our V3 project. The first thing we do, and then we always wanna stress this, is never point to your production database. So basically within our V3 project, we're going to point to a different database so we could start doing the following steps. First, we're going to use code mods, which is going to migrate all of our content types and schemas, which is the most important part. You don't wanna move those items manually. And this is why Using code mod is recommended 99% of the time. It's also going to move the folder structures, dependencies, config, and create a new .env file. And all of this is going to be done automatically, which is awesome. At this stage, you should be able to build your application minus your custom code. What's awesome, because at this point you have two options. And a lot of our customers went with migrating their database next. You could use either the scripts or you could migrate the database manually, depending on your use case. In majority cases, use the DB migration script. Even if you need to do something custom, you have the script there available for you. And if you do need something done, you could fork the script, make the changes inside your script to make it work with your code. And also your team could also continue to work on migrating custom code. And if your application did not have any custom code, then you are done. And before we jump in starting our project, let's take a look at the documentation. We have a couple of different migration guides depending on where you are. One caveat that I want to say here before you embark on your migration, keep in mind is this section here where we are migrating from an application with the minimum version of 3.6. That is the most important part. So if you're using a strappy application, that's a different version. You will have to follow those specific migration steps first. And one caveat I would say here, if you're really, really behind, this might be a step and maybe the right choice for you, actually start your application from scratch in V4. But in any case, whatever version you're migrating, you would have to migrate them in steps by doing each individual path. And that might come with some additional changes. So with that being said, if you're not too far from 3.6, for instance, in our current project, I believe we're in 3.5, we'll be able to do the migration from 3.5 to 3.6, and then we'll be ready to go. But I just wanted to let you know because that's an important part to keep in mind. And for this demo, I'm going to share this repo. We're going to use this project that we have here because it has some customizations in terms uh, custom controllers and services. So we'll get to look at how to handle that in our application. So without any ado, let's jump right into it. So let's get started by setting up our demo project. We're going to start in this repo and I'll make sure to put the link in the bottom. What we're going to do, we're going to copy the link and let's go to our terminal and get clone, paste the link and let's call our folder v3 project. Click enter. Once you clone the repository, make sure that you CD into the appropriate folder. And before you do anything, make sure you change to the correct version of Node, which is in our case going to be NVM use 14. And I believe Strapi v3 supports up to version 14.19.0. Once we're inside our project, let's install our dependencies by running yarn. Once our dependencies are installed, let's run yarn seed to 
seed some initial data that we could use in the future when migrating our data from v3 project to v4 using our database migration scripts. Next, let's run yarn build to get the project started. Once the project's all set, let's run it by running yarn develop. Let's open it in localhost and go ahead and create a user. Make sure you use a super secret password. You all know it's a monkey one, two, three, four, and make sure you have an exclamation point. Oh, I didn't mean to show you my password, but I want to make sure that I typed it correctly. Once we're inside, take a look at restaurants, and now you could see we have some data available, which we will use when practicing how to use the Strapi DB migration script. Now, before we finish this video, let's take a look at our code and come up with a strategy that we could use. First thing I want to point to, if you look at our package.json file, that we're using Strapi version 3.5.0. Before moving to the next step, we are going to make sure that we migrate this to at least 3.6.9 to make sure that our applications is up to date for code mods to work correctly. Also, let's take a look at some of the customizations that we have. For instance, in our API folder, we have all of our content types. If you look at restaurants, we have our controllers where we have a custom controller. All your custom code will have to be migrated separately because it's custom. We also have middlewares and policies that we're going to take a look how to implement in v4 when we get there let's take a look in reviews and we're also going to talk about how to migrate our custom services and talk about this general idea of few things that you could refactor we also support graphql and in later videos we're going to show you how to set up custom graphql resolvers as well but with that being said Let's save all of that for next videos and end this video here. So to sum up, we set up our food advisor v3 project. We got some basic data inside our database and we have a strategy that we thought about our migration steps that we have to take. For instance, first bringing our current application up to the latest 3.6.9 version and then using code mods, which we will all do in the next video. By the way, if you're not a member of our Discord, you should go ahead and join right now. And of course, I'm gonna link in the bottom below. But the most important part is we have a dedicated channel there for V3 to V4 migration. And also we have an investment every third week of every month where we talk about strappy development best practices which is a way for you to ask your questions to dive deeper into the core code of strappy and to learn more about strappy customization so see you on discord and see you in the next video